Hi everyone, this is Heather Smith from Storyville Photography, and today I'm going to show you how to achieve this edit. Um, this is the before, and the only adjustment I made in Lightroom is to warm up the white balance a little bit. And this is the finished product. So, I'm going to put that in the trash and start from fresh. The first thing I want to do is come over to my Actions panel and run the smoothing and sharpening action. So I'm going to first do step one. And I'm going to actually turn the opacity down to 20%. And then I'm going to click on the step two, sharpening. And I'm going to do the same here. Just turn it to 20%. And then I'm going to go to Layer and Flatten Image. And the next thing I want to do is get kind of a swirl going on here. Um, it just is a lot of fun for this image. So I'm going to go into the Dreamy Mat and run the Twisted Mat action. And as you can see, it comes on really strong. And I have a whole bunch of layers um, added into this. But I'm going to turn all of these off and just stick with the base. And I like to put it all the way to zero and just kind of gradually go up to where my eye likes it. And that looks good to me. And then I am going to click on the layer mask and grab a soft wax brush at 100% opacity and just wipe it off my subjects. So that's the before and after there. Nice magical touch if you ask me. Then I'm going to flatten that. And the next thing I want to do is add the simplicity presets. For those of you that don't know, you can also use um, the Storyville presets in the camera raw in Photoshop if you have one of the newer versions. And it's really cool because then if you don't like the preset on a certain area, it's so easy to just add a layer mask and mask it off those areas. So to do that, I'm going to first make a copy um, of the background layer and go into filter in the camera raw filter and let me size this so you can see it i'm going to go into the presets and for this i'm going to just select the simplicity one and the only thing change i want to make is to the luminance of the orange because it kind of blew their skin out a little bit so i'm just going to decrease that to about 27 percent and that looks good to me so this is the before and the after of the preset. I just love what it does. It makes the image really come to life and pop. So the next thing I want to do is go in and grab the ultimate dodge and burn and hit play. I'm going to open it up, open it up. And sometimes when I have more than one subject and I know that the amount of dodging and burning on the clothes, I'm or the skin, or the environment, anything you think, you can double up or triple up or make as many copies as you want before you get started. Because I have three subjects here, I'm going to create three different layers. So just Command J, Command J, and now I have three copies of the dodge and burn combination. And this makes things so quick, guys, because it just dodges and burn it, burns all in one action. And then if you want to increase just the dodging a little or the burn you can do it separately or just choose to do those and not the combination itself but i love the combination so what i'm going to do is grab a soft white brush 100 percent opacity i'll zoom in so i can see it or you guys can see it rather and as you can see it comes on really soft i have the opacity set as 26 percent but you can take it all the way up to 100. i like to just kind of gradually increase it to where it almost seems like their clothing is like glowing. It has this nice like shine to them. I just love it. And I'm going to go over her dress. A little bit on her shoes. And then for her vest, I just want to burn it a little because it's already pretty bright. So just run that over. And look at the difference here got to be one of my like new favorite actions this is newer to the Storyville shop um and I just just absolutely love it so now I'm going to move on to the dodge and burn copy and again that's coming on a little soft so I like to just kind of do a test run there 
and increase it to where I like. And you can always go back and play around with the opacity um, and see if you want to increase it or decrease it. I'm just going to run over this. And if you're going to print this, I say this in all of my tutorials, print it or do it for a client. Make sure that you don't halo or, you know, um, go out of lines like that because it can, uh, well, it's just not a good look on his little hat. Okay. And that looks good. I might brighten up just a little bit more. There we go. I like that. And now onto the third um, copy that I made. And I'm going to run it over her whole dress. Again, I'm not taking much time on this, guys, um, as you might want to. I already have these pictures done, and I don't want to waste your time and bore you just dragging it out. Okay, and now I want to add extra burn. I'm going to run over her whole dress. And that looks good enough to me for the tutorial purposes. Um, there's the before and after. Such a difference. It really makes them pop. I just love it. Um, if you open it up, I have the same thing in here um, for the skin. I personally like to dodge and burn separately on the skin in here. So that's why I have that um, set up the way that I do. And you can also make as many copies as you want or just use one out of it. You don't always have to use the whole action. For the environment, I'm going to do the dodge and burn combo. It's going to come on really strong, so I am going to have to dial it back, and I only want to do it on some of the areas. Right there looks good to me. Okay, and so there's the before and after using just that dodge and burn. Such a difference, guys. I just love it. Oh. Just kidding, almost done. I want to desaturate this a little bit. As you can tell, this is really yellowy, and although it is pretty, it kind of draws your eye away from my subjects um, to the bright green tree there. So soft white brush, 100% opacity. I'm gonna run it over there, and then I'm gonna turn this up till it kind of blends more. Perfect. So before and after. That looks good to me. Um, the next thing I want to do is go into my image base, which is also another favorite action of mine, and hit play. And as you can see, it does a lot of fun things here, and I am going to make some tweaks. The first thing I want to do is make sure that the darkened edges are not running over it onto my subjects. So just going to take a soft black brush and wipe it off of them. I'm going to turn the con chon ugh, contrast off and to brighten up off. Um, we may come back and brighten it a little bit later, but as of now, it I just don't need it. Here, I'm just gonna look at the surrounding areas and see how this color dazzle is gonna affect it. I don't want this on my subject for this um, tutorial. They're already plenty um, uh, vibrant, if you ask me. So, but I like what it does to the environment. So, oops, about, 56, 59, that looks good to me. And then I'm going to invert it. So Command I, soft white brush, 100% opacity, and just kind of brighten it. It really intensifies the colors, and I just love it. So that's the before and after. And the next thing I want to do is grab the Storyville Sun overlay. A lot of you guys, um, I get messages that you can't load these into your actions panel, and that's because you can't. They're overlays, they're JPEGs, so you can open them up just like you would any other image, or you can drag and drop them on top of your images. Um, once you have it open in Photoshop, just select the whole thing, copy it, and then click on the image you wanna use it on, and hit um, paste. Set it to screen mode, guys, and then you want to um, select this again, and then come up to the top under edit and hit the free transform 
and then you're going to be able to move it. You're going to be able to resize it, um, whatever you want using this tool. It's really great. I might make it just a tad bigger and that looks good. And I also like to add a little bit of a blur onto my sun overlays, or if you zoom in really close, you'll see like a distinct line from where that overlay ends. Um, and you just don't want that. Or you can add a layer mask and brush it off with a soft black brush. But it's easier to just go to blur, Gaussian blur, and like around 33% is good. And then for this image, I wanted to change the tone of the sun um, just a little bit. So I'm going to go into my adjustments and the hue and saturation adjustment, and I'm gonna hit this down arrow, so whatever I, ugh, whatever I do is just going to affect the sun, guys. And I just want to kinda of turn it up this way to about 20, 17, whatever, um, percent, and that looks good. So that's the before and after, before and after. And I just like the tone that that brings to this image. Um, super easy, right guys? And then I think I want to brighten up this purple just a little bit more and make it pop. So I'm going to come into the color dazzle with, um, in the image base and I'm going to run over this a little bit more because I clearly missed it the first time. Okay. And that looks good to me. And the last thing I want to do is just kind of get rid of some of this yellow on the ground there. So again, I'm going to take a hue and saturation adjustment layer, go into the yellows and just kind of crank it down a little bit. And then I want to invert it. And at 100% opacity, soft white brush, just kind of brush on um, the yellows that are kind of standing out too much at the bottom, maybe a little bit more on this one tree. And that looks good to me. And then the last thing I want to do is just brighten up the image a little bit. So I'm going to grab the curves adjustment layer and just kind of pull up on the highlights. And that looks good to me. So I think we're done here. Um, let me group these together. And again, we did run a few actions before this grouping, but I also posted the before at the beginning. So you can always scroll back there as well. So this is the before with the smoothing and sharpening and the twisted matte action. And then this is the after. Very bright, very fun. Um, yeah, so I also use the Canon 5D Mark III and the 200 millimeter 2.0 on this image in case anybody was wondering. You can find everything I used here at the Storyville Photography shop at www.storyvillephotography.com. Thanks guys, have a great day, bye.